Let's get going. Thanks everybody for joining. This is part two in the bespoke custom kitless pen making series. Uh, we're going to call them custom pens. And from for today, we are going to make a cap and body. Uh, and we'll get into that here just real quick. If you didn't watch the first video and you want to, it's all about the tooling we're going to use. You don't have to watch it first, but if you watch this, you might want to go back and check it out. It might explain things a little better. Uh, today we're doing cap and body. We're going to do the drilling, the threads, uh, inside and out for both the cap and body and the section. Next week we're going to make the uh, section for the fountain pen and we'll do the shaping and uh, basically kind of wrap it up. And then uh, we had a lot of requests for adding a clip. So the week after we're going to do a clip on a cap, which will be pretty cool. I've never done a video on that, so that'll be fun to do on camera. Uh, and then we were even talking about doing another one, making a rollerball section, because a lot of these are fountains and some people want rollerball or both. So we're going to do that. I think that'll be really cool. But let's get started. Uh, we're going to jump right in and I want to show you the tools we're going to use today specifically. And then we're going to go over what our process is and what we're going to do and we're going to make it. So let me jump over here. Today, we are going to use, uh, da, 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 da. we are going to be making the cap and the body. So we're going to be making the inside threads, outside threads, and then the inside threads for the section so that we can make that. We are going to need our two drill bits for our cap and body. We're going to need, of course, a drill chuck. Uh, we're going to use a live center, our collet chuck with the appropriate collet for our blank. We will use the tap and die for the body and the tap uh, for the section. We don't need the die for the section because we're going to do that on, on the section itself right here. We're also going to use the niche system uh, to hold our tap and dies. We're going to use this. It's a Morris Taper 2 with the larger um, tap holder and the larger die holder because I'm actually going to make an M14. I wanted to do an M13, but I had loaned my M13 set out to a customer and I haven't got it back yet. So uh, same exact process, just a different size. And we'll go over all that here in just a minute. But we will get started by first uh, getting our collet chuck on the lathe and getting our blank chucked up. Now you're going to see last time I had uh, a, a long rod, an eight and a half. It looked similar to this. Actually, it looked like this because this is it. And I cut it into three pieces. Now, the size of the pieces in your, on your first one are going to kind of be important because you may not have something to reference off of. If you have a pen that you can measure off, that's a great way to do it. Uh, but if you don't have that, you can always measure. And I'll just give you a ballpark here. This is 100 mil, which is about, what's 100 mil? Four inches? I think, yeah, four inches. Uh, the, that's the body. The cap is about 85 mil and the section is 47 millimeters. Now that's way too much for all of these, but you do want some extra on each end. And I'll show you why here when we uh, get further down the road. But essentially I cut up the blank and I don't cut off any extra. I leave the extra on the pieces. That way I can hold them. I can use my uh, live center on them and do different things and I don't have to worry about damaging the part that's going to be actually the body. So we're going to first grab our cap piece and I'm going to take it to the lathe. Now one thing that's very important is we want these faces square. Now I cut this one on the bandsaw I'm pretty sure and it is not square. I mean it's close but it's not great. I'm just using my uh, my center finder here because it's a 90 to see if there's a gap in there. There is a little bit of a off squareness. So I'm going to square this up and then I'm going to drill with my drill chuck and my large bit. Now, again, when you have a cap or if you don't have a, dis a piece to, to work off of, you kind of need to know how deep to drill that. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. And you can see I've marked this one. So it's got a little mark on how deep I drill this particular size. And we're going to go over all that here in just one minute. So let's get this mounted in the lathe and get it set up.
All right. So I got my drill chuck. I'm going to grab my collet chuck. Let's see. I need a big collet for this blank. Now, if you are new to collet chucks, a collet sits in the collet chuck with this taper. So I'm going to put the chuck on here first. And you first need to snap it into the, the chuck nut before you go to, to put it in. If you just put the collet in there, then the nut, it's going to not seat properly and it's not going to clamp down on your workpiece properly. Collet chucks have different uh, wrenches. This uses this little funky little dot system. It works fine. But what I'm going to first do, I'm going to put the back end of my blank in. So if you can see, these little lines are where I want the cap and body to meet. So this is the the inside, this is the end of my pen. I'm gonna put the end in first. Actually, it looks like my collet fell out of the fell out of the nut when I was putting it in. There it is. And the reason I knew that is the collet was sitting back about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna put the back end in first. And the reason I do that, is I'm gonna lock this down. Actually, I'm gonna tighten up the collet first. It's a little snug. Okay, and the first thing I'm gonna do is square it off. Now, I can't be perfect with my turning tools to square this, but I'm gonna get it as close as I can. Anything that's square is ideal and what you need, but on a wood lathe, it's tough sometimes to get square. Uh, the best thing you can do is cut this on a saw that you know is square and then double check it. Uh, when I use my miter saw for this, it's much better than when I use the band saw. So that's just a little, little tip. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of give this, oh, a little bit of a facing. And what I want is, I don't want that to be, uh, dipped in too far or at more more than in i don't want it to be out so that actually looks pretty flat now uh, one thing also is i'm going to slow down the lathe so if you have your lathe set to the highest speed which a lot of us do for turning go ahead and turn that sucker down to the lowest speed so i'm just going to move the belt to the lowest range if I can do it backwards here without looking at it. Yeah, it feels like I'm on. Nope. Okay. Looks like I'm on. Okay. All right. So I've slowed this down. And the reason being, a lot of these procedures, if I am going to run the lathe for tapping or uh, drilling, I want it a little slower. On the high speed on this one, or on the high belt, the band is like 1,400 to 3,900. So 1,400 is a little heavy for speed. So we're going to do that. First thing I'm going to do is get my center drill. I'm using a number three center drill. And I'm going to put it in my chuck. And I'm just going to kind of touch this back end. Remember, this is the top of the pen, although this will be cut away when I go to to make it, I just want to give myself a little, um, a little imprint here to put my live center in later. So I don't need to drill very far, but that's all I need to do. Now I can loosen this. Whoa, jumper. Keep that there. And I'm going to flip this around and now I, I'm going to go to the working side. So this will be the side that I'm going to cut my hole in for the, the cap threads. So I'm gonna get this snug. And if you don't have a collet chuck, you can do this with a four jaw chuck. And actually um, on my metal lathe, which is where I mostly do custom pins, I use a four jaw chuck. A lot of people use collet chucks and other things, but mine has a four jaw and that's what I still use on it. So I don't mind a four jaw chuck personally. 
Boy, it's a lot slower. So I dropped my little square, so I'm gonna use this tool. Let's see if it looks square enough. Eh, we'll call it good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and drill into this one. Now this one, I can drill a little more because I'm not worried about um, using the material. This is all gonna be removed anyway here in a sec. Now, that's ready to be drilled. So let's look at something real quick. Let's go to the overhead. All right, so we're gonna make this, this is our blank. Everyone loves when I draw pictures because they're so good. It's almost a rectangle. Okay, so we're gonna be drilling into it this way. Now, w if you remember back to the beginning, the first video, or I've said this in the past here, um, we're doing this very simply. So we're only using one bit. This bit for a 14 is a 13.2, I believe. Uh, yeah. So I'm doing an M14 thread and I'm using a 13.2 millimeter drill. I'm sure there's a standard equivalent that's near enough that you could use it. I, I can't remember who told me the 0.8, but maybe it was Jim. Jim knows a lot about uh, sizes. But really, 13 to 13 and a half probably would work, but you don't want to go too high or too low because then it affects your threads. But we are going to drill one hole all the way to the depth we need, like this. So this is all going to be removed. Now, boy, that's a crooked line. Now, down the road, you can drill two different sizes and what that would do is give you more material to work with. So say now your nib is in here and you're not taking away this extra material and that would allow you to shape your pen smaller or different, however you want to do it. Whereas this larger hole all the way back, we got to be aware of that hole and that will affect our shape. So, you know, we might only be able to shape it up here and this is very general. So don't, don't get hung up on this, but as you develop skills and you get better at this, you might do multiple different drill depths of different sizes, and that will better your opportunity for other shapes. So just keep that in mind. If it's your first one, just do one bit to practice on, and then think about it, measure your parts, measure your nib, and how you want to lay it out, because that's going to be very important. Now for this particular drill bit for what we're going to use. We're going to drill about 60 mils maybe, 60 mil deep. And if you're wondering what we're drilling for, we need two things here. We need room for the cap to house the nib and section up in it, as well as the threads for the body to go into this. So if we measure this, just our section and our nib, that's 47. But what we have to take into account is also that these threads where the cap threads on are going to be on there. And if we make it too small, we're going to crush that nib. So we're about 52. And I'll be honest, on this cap, I was in a hurry and I didn't measure. I just kind of winged it. And I made the cap too long. So I don't like this long cap. I'm probably going to shorten it up at some point. But 52.8 is what we need just to clear the threads to the end of the nib. Now, if we want to make it a little longer, we can. We cannot make it shorter because if you are tightening a cap down to your threads to where it stops and you hit this nib at the end of your cap inside, you're going to curl that nib and you're not even going to know what's happening until you take it out. It happens so easy. It'll just bend right in there with you. 
So be really aware of what you're measuring and what you want to lay out because you need this whole space, that whole 60 uh, or 52, whatever it was, 52 millimeters to clear all those parts. Now we're going to do 60 because that's what I wrote down here. Um, so we'll make it adjusted later, but we're going to drill 60. I've marked my bit. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's a line on here. I could also put a stop if I had stops, but I don't. So I mark it and that's where we're going to go with it. But, but that's what we're doing. Now, also this size is for specifically those threads, like we mentioned. So it not only clears all your parts when you put the pen into the cap, but it also allows you to thread it without any issue. All right, one great drawing down. Amy loves my drawings. Yes, everyone at Turner's loves the drawings, whether they want to admit it or not. Okay, so we got the drill bit in the drill. We got uh, our blank chucked up. I'm gonna grab some lubricant and my brush. Uh, I always call this my oily brush because it's always got oil or WD-40 on it. You don't have to do this, but I sure think it looks better and cuts better. You don't need a ton of it. It won't hurt your lathe, so that's all right. Now, we're going to drill this a couple of steps. We're going to go in, clear it, go in, clear it. What you don't want to do is just barrel into it and have it build up a lot of pressure in there and a lot of dust, because what it actually does is it'll start to soften your resin as you go in there, and your bit will start to wallow, and you'll get a really wacky hole in there. Um, and in some cases, it'll cause you trouble down the road. So we want to make a nice clean cut as, be as best as we can. So I'm going to roll this up here and I'm just going to slowly crank in the first little bit. I'm going to set this to, let's see how fast it'll go. Well, top speed on my low setting is 900. Let's tip it back. Eh, there's 860. That should work. So I'm just gonna slowly get her started. Oh, sorry. Okay, you wanna lock your tailstock down. <laughs> now once I've gone in a little ways, I can, you know, move a little quicker. But you see we got nice big ribbons there, so we're cutting pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little squirts. Get some of that dust off. We can probably make this in three cuts. We might be able to do it in less, but there's no sense in messing up something. And you'll notice if you go too far, you won't have ribbons. Uh, the end of it will be all powder. And I think that just means it's too hot or it's not cutting as well. I don't know. I need to back up my tailstock here. All right, there we go. We're getting close. You can see there's our line. So we're almost there. Whoa, be careful sliding that in there. Oh, and what I did is I went a little too far and my blank is slipping in the collet. All right, let's get that loose, okay. Yeah, see I had a lot of powder build up there and it kind of like creates like concrete, just sucks it up. Oh, nope, my collet's loose, Never mind. <laughs> Not bad. All right. Mm. We're almost there. We were right at the end. There we go. All right. So we are clear. Now, one thing I didn't do is uh, I didn't bring my compressor out here. So 
I got to do the personal compressor, but that's fine. We are good here as far as the hole goes. We can get rid of this guy, take this off. And we're just going to do one other thing before we tap this cap. Yes, do we have a question? So I forgot to mention, this is live and the whole idea is that uh, if you guys have questions or comments, throw them out there. I will always disclaim, this is how I do it. May not be the right way, but it's how I do it. It works usually. So uh, if you got comments, feel free. And then if you have questions, Amy will read them to me. So what you got? What was the measurement of the section with the nib? The measurement of the section with the nib? Uh, good question. Uh, do, from the end of the threads or I'm assuming probably they probably want to know the section threads here to the nib if you want a different measurement let me know but the measurement from the end of my cap threads to the nib is about 54 ish yeah, 54. If you want a different one, let me know. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is um, let's talk real quick about cap and body fit. So imagine your threads. Perfect opportunity here. Okay, so if this is your cap and this is your body going into it. These are your threads. You see that okay? Imagine if the threads are all the way to the end here. They're gonna have to immediately start hitting the threads and turning. What I like to do is cut just a little bit of a recess or a uh, chamfer. Disregard this heavy line at the end, that's just whatever because there's still going to be material at the end, but we're going to just kind of cut a little chamfer and then our threads will start from there. I don't like to have the threads meet right flat to flat. To me, it seems like you're asking for a cross thread at some point or some thread damage. So having that little bit in the cap kind of gives them something to kind of go into and start, like have a kind of like a funnel. But what it also does when this gets to the end, your cap is going to have to rest right on these shoulders, right? It's going to go flat up against there. If these shoulders are at all not flat, your cap is going to stop too soon. And you can, you can alleviate that by doing a couple things. You can cut a relief here at the back of your threads, so a relief. And that's definitely not how you spell relief, but that's all right. Or you can do like I'm talking about with this little bit of chamfer, and that'll give you just a little bit of a, uh, what's the word? A little bit of a, a gimme as far as the alignment. You can see on this pen, perhaps, that these threads, there's no relief. I don't personally like the look of a relief on the back of the, the body threads there. So when I thread this in, it goes all the way and covers the threads to the body, but there's no relief there. And the reason is I have that little bit of relief on the inside of my cap. So that's just personal preference. You can do it however you want, but to me that looks better and that's the way I like it. So that's how I make it. That's one of those things that you can really tailor to your style or what you prefer. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this. And we're not gonna do much. We're just gonna give it a little bit of an angle here on the inside. And I'm using a negative rake um, detail tool, diamond tool. You could use whatever you want. You don't have to cut much. We're not taking out a lot of material. It's very, very minimal. And it's really just like a kind of an extended chamfer inside there. So if you can see it, whoops, there's kind of a little lip in there. 
and that's from that cut. So you can see it kind of looks white, and that's what that is. Now, one other thing. Hey, will you grab me a blue tub with a little water? Kurt, dump my water. One other thing I'm going to do, because once we thread this, we're not going to want to like get in there and mess around with the threads, is I'm going to sand the inside of this just a tiny bit. And I'm not looking for uh, perfection necessarily. But anything you can do on your threads to help you have a smoother cap or a better looking cap, I would definitely do it. So I'm just using some 800 here. I mean, I was on a negative rate carbide. It shouldn't be that rough. So I'm just going to get the end of my cap in the chamfer. Because I won't be able to really sand this once it's all done and shaped. Because I won't have a way to hold this. So if I did it, it would have to be by hand. But I like to do this just a little bit before we tap it. All right. That'll work. Nice. Yeah, countersink tools, definitely an option. Um, really, like, kind of like I was saying before, I'm just using stuff I have. I don't, I'm not trying to buy extra stuff. If I had that, I would totally use it. Uh, you could also use, like, a, a reamer or something, but that works pretty good. Okay, let's get our niche set ready. What we're going to use for that is our, tail, our niche tailstock mount. We're going to use the large uh, tap holder because this is an M14. So if you're using a 13, you can use the large, but you can also use the standard one that comes with the set. So don't worry about that. And then this is our tap here. And you just put it in by loosening it, kind of like a drill chuck, inserting it and tightening it up. So if you didn't watch the first one or you're not familiar with this, the beauty of this system is it's a precision, smooth way to run a tap or a die uh, without having to hand hold it or try to advance your tail stock. So once you get this all set up and get it close, and we're going to actually do this by hand. We're not going to run the lathe. Once you get it close, you can kind of just feed it by hand and run it in there. So. I'm going to give a little squirt inside and a little bit on my tap. Make sure there's no dust or gunk on here, although there's, there's always dust in here. Good luck, no dust. So I'm going to get this close, run it up here. And once I get it to where it's meeting the hole, I'm ready to tap. So I guess I'll leave it zoomed back. But basically, I'm just going to kind of give it a little forward pressure and roll it. And you can see. You can see my curls start to come out. So I'm starting to get curls. We're cutting. You want to rotate it a rotation or so, back it up a little more, back it up a little more, back it up. Now, one thing that I didn't really mention, but it's just another personal preference thing, is how far you tap these threads. So you'll see a lot of pens out there. And if it's got any transparency to it, you'll see like an inch or two of threads. People tend to just run this all the way up the cap and out. And technically, I guess there's nothing wrong with it, but I don't like the way that looks. I think it looks like somebody just went hog wild or too far. Um, so I try to tap it only as far as I need to for my threads. So I was a little short there, so I'm gonna go back. Oh, uh -oh hope I didn't mess them up right there. And you want to pay attention, so talking is probably not the best thing, but we'll see. Okay. Let's get this close. So you want to tap it in there, but uh, just keep that in mind. If you're going to have a transparent blank, there we go. You don't want to go crazy with the tap and, and tap an inch of threads, because you saw on that body, I think we have about eight millimeters of threads, so I don't need you know an inch of of threads in my cap. Same thing on the body. 
I don't like a lot of threads because I don't want to have to be turning the cap lid forever. Um, so you can adjust the preference on that, how much you want to thread it. There's all our little curly cues from inside there. <laughs> Definitely have some air around. So ideally I'd like to blow that out so there's no debris. But what I can do is I've got a body I can test it with. And I can just see if our threads are good, if they're loose, tight, whatever. And actually that fit pretty well. It, it went right up to the body. And you can see this body isn't a long thread. There's maybe, maybe eight or 10 millimeters of threads. So that looks pretty good. So we line up nicely. And we look pretty centered. We're, we got just a little bit, but obviously they're two different blanks and this was smaller, so that's why. Um, but it looks pretty good. So there's the cap threading. That is how simple putting the cap threads in can be. But like I said, you can always uh, step them a little bit and make them more precise for shaping or other things. So let's move on to the body. We're gonna just set this aside. There's probably some, oh yeah, there's chunks now falling out. So we're gonna move on to the body. And the cool thing with the body is we get to use the tenon cutter and the tap and the die. So that's gonna be fun. We got a question. You can use the Jacobs check to hold the tap, absolutely. Uh, you just got to be aware if you're trying to advance it uh, and your Morris taper slides out a little bit, you're going to have this wobble. So you want to be careful of that. And if you're cranking it, you want to try to just kind of keep the speeds going at the same pace so you don't have a, a wackiness to it. Good question. Okay. So we're going to come back to this in a minute, but we... We are gonna switch some tools here. First thing we're gonna do is grab our body. We are gonna need the tenon cutter and we're gonna need the right bushings for this one. So we need the tenon cutter, the six mil drill bit that's included with the tenon cutter. We need the setup bushing and the Allen wrench. So we're gonna do those first. So let's take this over to the lathe and I'm gonna show you how to set up the tenon cutter. Okay, tenon cutter is a really cool thing. Uh, this was an old Jim Hines invention. We actually make these here at Turner's Warehouse uh, using Jim's design. So, let's see, what's the best way to show this? Probably like that. Okay, so what this tenon cutter does is it is a simple and easy way to cut the size that you need for these threads. And it makes it, it's one, easier, and two, faster, and three, probably more precise than just if you just kept cutting and measuring, cutting and measuring, because you tend to always go just a little too much. Um, so this tenon cutter will help you cut that, th that size for your threads so much easier. And you'll use this on not only the body here, but also on the section that goes into the inside. So it's really cool how this works. And uh, I actually like kind of showing how it works. So let me, let me do that. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and throw this. Nope, that's not first thing. First thing is I'm going to throw my center drill in because we always want to center drill both ends of the blank. At least I do. So I'm going to do the back end first. And I'm going to go ahead and square these. Like I said, if you had a, a good saw setup, you probably wouldn't need to do this, but let's take the extra second and do it. So just, yeah, this one's real rough. That's like a bunch of bandsaw marks and things. So, you know, would that mess us up being out? Probably, I don't know, but... Why not just try to give it as much of a square as we can? So it looks pretty good. So that's the end of my pen, the lower end. I'm gonna flip it. This is the end that'll meet the cap now. 
So I'm going to go and lock this one down a little tougher. And like I said, I always use a four jaw chuck on the metal lathe, so I wouldn't be opposed to it. But since I have the, the collet chuck with all the collets here, this seems like a great way to go. I love a collet chuck. All right, so we'll square this one. Boy, you can hear how rough and gruff that cut was. There was like big lines from the bandsaw. All right. Looks good. Okay. Now that we're done with that, we can center drill this sucker. And this is the cap end that is, uh, we're gonna, or I'm sorry, the body end that we're gonna drill through in a minute. So if I go a little further, it's not a big deal because we're gonna actually drill this out six millimeters first. And then we will drill it out uh, for the 10 millimeter section threads at the end. All right. So let's talk about this tenon cutter. This is gonna mount in my drill chuck, just like a drill bit, and it's gonna go into the blank while the lathe is on, and this carbide cutter right here is gonna cut that tenon to the perfect size. Now, we sell this tenon cutter with, with setup bushings from nine to 15. So if you're making a smaller pen and using a nine for your section, we got you covered, and if you're making a big old pen, and using a 15 cap and body, we got you covered there too. And how you set this up is this rod, this guide rod comes out, but you wanna put it in. You wanna loosen your Allen screws here, your set screws. And you'll see that this whole section, the cutter and the plate that it's mounted on will come out. You don't really need to take it out, but you can. Now, you slide on the setup bushing and you wanna line this cutter up to where it's flat on the surface of this lower shelf. This is the, on the bushings, the smaller side is always your setup. This is to stop it so it can hit the, the uh, cutter. So you wanna line it up to where that cutter is flat against the setup bushing, but you don't want it tight. So I wanna be able to roll this setup bushing and not have it be digging into the cutter. I would just want it just to barely touch it. So I'm gonna just kinda of give this a little snug and I'm gonna see if I'm still loose. See, I got a little tighter. So I'm gonna loosen these just a hair again. And it's important because you don't want the cutter to be crooked this way or this way, because you can move it any way you want the way these screws work. So I'm just gonna get it just in place to where I can move it. Try to lock it down. Okay, we're good there. Give this one a little snug. Okay, so I've got it in place, locked down, and there's no gap between this and my bushing, but I can roll this bushing. And your hair's in the way. And, oh, sorry, my hair's in the way. So it's flat against the bushing, rolling, but it's, there's no gap. So I don't see any light when I look through there, which is ideal. So the setup bushing makes it really nice. Um, for all the different size tenons that you might need. And then it's kind of a no brainer. So set that out of the way. Now we wanna drill this six mil into our blank. The six mil matches the shaft of the tenon cutter. The reason it's six millimeters is that's smaller than the drill we're gonna drill out later for the converter and the uh, section threads. If it was bigger, obviously that wouldn't work. So that's why it's a six millimeter. Now we need this drill to go at least this depth. So I need to loosen that and pull it out a little bit. And we're going to do that. Okay. Now before, before we do that, let's talk about the threads on the body. So I mentioned a, a little bit ago, let me know if I put my head in the way. 
that our body is going to be like this, and our threads will stick out. So these are the threads. And obviously, we're going to shape this at some point, but you have to kind of determine how you want the look to be. So like the pen I just showed you, the body kind of comes right up to the threads, and the threads start, and it just tapers down a little bit. So it's fairly smooth. You can have a larger shelf there, a larger um, lip if you want. You can have it smaller. You can have it kind of flow right from the, the threads into the body. It's totally preference. But what you have to keep in mind is this tenon cutter that we're about to use is what we're cutting the threads tenon with. So if we need 20 mil of thread space, we got to cut it 20 millimeters deep. If we only want 10 or 5, then that's where we'll cut it. Now, I like it a little shorter, so I'm going to do about, let's see, grab a measure. We're going to do it about, yeah, 8 to 10. So what I like to do is if I look at the cutter, I can say, all right, 8 millimeters is right, you know, on the outside edge of that screw hole when I go through. So that's kind of a good visual for me to stop just there, just beyond there. I can always trim a little bit off later if I need to, but that's a good way to kind of eyeball how you're going to measure it. You can always mark it. You can always just measure your piece as you cut it, but have, have your micrometer, micrometer, right, out to, uh, to measure that. So we're going to go in with our 6 mil, and then in a minute we're going to go in with our 9 mil, and it'll take out that 6 mil. So the 6 mil will be irrelevant once we get it all through. All right, you ready? Let's drill this. Any questions come up? Um, the, the bushing was um, 14 millimeter, right? Yeah, it's a 14 millimeter because it's not actually 14, it's for the 14 millimeter die, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? And then we're um, having some clarification about how it's going to it. Does it come in the tenant cut? It does. The drill bit does come in the tenon cutter. Now, if you got a tenon cutter a while back, maybe it didn't, but the new set that we've made the last few months with all the setup bushings, if your set came with all the setup bushings, it should have or it did come with a six mil drill. If it didn't, let me know, or you might have a six mil that you can use, but um, we do include them. Oh, I need to slow down. What's, uh, what's going on? So I'm just going to kind of push feed this now. I can knock my threads out. This is such a small drill. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Okay. So if I'm wrong, get a six mil, but I thought it came in it, but maybe it doesn't. The six millimeter drill bit is the least of your concerns. As long as you got all the bushings and stuff, that's the main thing. All right, let's load this up now. We are ready to go. I'm gonna go to the overhead cam so you guys can see this thing cut. Now, if you've ever cut one of these by hand without this, um, it's easily done. You just have to measure a lot and stop and measure and stop and measure, which is fine. But this makes it a lot easier. I was talking to Zach Higgins, and uh, he said, that tenon cutter, he goes, because I said, I said last time, if you're going to just make one or two of these, you probably don't want to spend the money on a tenon cutter. And he said, if I was going to make one, I'd spend the money because it's so easy. But that being said, if you're not going to make more than one, don't buy a tenon cutter because it's just going to sit there. Um, but they do work great, and we'll show you here. So I'm going to run this like, like a drilling speed. We're at 700. And I'm going to advance just to where my measurement was for the screw. 
and it's carbide, so it's going to cut pretty easily and pretty rapidly. Yeah, if I say anything and then they correct me in the chat, go by with whatever they say in the chat because they're probably looking at the sets or they're probably the ones who box them for us, so they would know better than I. But uh, you can see that tenon looks beautiful and awesome, and it's pretty much ready to go. So this is the other reason the, the shaft is loose. A lot of times when you go to pull it out, if things are binding or it's just caught up, it's easier to pull it out by hand. But that tenon is now ready for uh, threading. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm actually going to pull the tenon cutter out. I'm going to do two little things here before we thread this outside. We're going to cut a little tiny chamfer, just not much at all. We're going to cut a little tiny chamfer on the outside just to kind of lead in. If you like to use a file, you could use a file there. The other thing we're going to do is we are going to grab our sandpaper again and we're going to sand where these threads go just for a minute just to make them smoother. Uh, depending on how the, the cut goes, this might help with your smoothness, smoothness later. But this is one of those spots that's harder to sand later, so you might want to get it in there right now. Higgins is in the chat. Zach Higgins? I've heard of him. Yep. Nice. Very good. That must be payback for when I go to his live streams. I hope he doesn't trash talk me. Actually, I hope he does. That'd be fun. Oh, that's nice and smooth, so that's good to go. All right. We are ready to tap this. Nope, not tap it. Thread it. Let's grab our tools. So we're done with those for now. So we're going to use our niche system again. Is he trash talking me? I made him a moderator and he said, oh dang, I got the wrench. Watch out everyone, I got the power to silence you now. <laughs> Very good. Try to get him to silence you, that'd be funny. All right, so I'm putting the die holder in for the, the, this size die. I wanna put the die in with the writing out for the, the initial threading here. You can always flip the die if you're trying to thread right up to a shoulder. And you wanna tighten these holding screws just snug. You don't want to you don't want to push on the die and and try to close it or anything. You're just putting these there so they're snug for the guiding. So there's our niche set ready to go. Uh, and I think that's all we need for this. Okay. So I got the lathe on. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Again, I can move this right up nice and close. Lock it down and I'm ready to go. Always make sure your tap, your, I always say the wrong word, always make sure your die is clean inside and doesn't have a bunch of gunk. And if it does, you can always clean it. I'm gonna put a little bit of lube on here for cutting. You don't have to lube up these threads. I mean, they're not that, that much or that difficult. They're just plastic, but I just prefer it. So I'm gonna keep doing what I like. Get this out here a little bit. All right, so you just get this up close. Let's see. And as you push, you're gonna feed the die over the threads area here. You can make a full rotation or so. You can see those curlies coming up maybe. Back it up and what that'll do is help cut them loose. And then you just keep feeding. And I'm, what I'm doing is just giving it a little pressure this way as I'm pushing. I'm rotating and kind of pushing. I'm not like pushing hard. It's more just a influential push. Back them up and come back. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and back this up a little bit. The beauty is I can back this up and I still got support here because of the rod. So now I got plenty of room to back this off the threads and clear them. We look pretty good. Usually you'll have some kind of threads stuck on there or just kind of 
getting in the way and you can clear them off. But those look pretty clean. And you can see the little chamfer, hopefully, right on the end, which will help make it smoother. Now, obviously, there's some WD-40 on there, so it's making them shinier. But I'm always convinced that by sanding the tenon a little bit before I thread it, my threads look better. So they probably would work the same had I not done that. But they, they always appear a little more shiny to me, which is worth that extra second. Now, I'm going to take the sandpaper one more time. And I'm just going to do it by hand. But I'm just going to sand my threads a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of taking off the very sharp tips of them, if there are any. So when you cut threads, you know, you're cutting those little, little points where it threads on. And the higher or the lower the pitch, the 0.8 means the threads are finer. So they're closer together and tighter. So they're a little more precise. And I think it makes them a little sharper. So by giving just that little bit of hand sanding, it usually makes them a little smoother and cleaner. Now we can try it by putting this on. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty smooth. Oh, it's a little snug. A little snug at the end there, but that's probably because I didn't thread it very far up into the cap. Oh, and now I got WD-40 in my hand. <laughs> All right. So they look pretty good. This would be the time if I needed to make adjustments, like with my cap threads or my relief, I would go back and do that. But we're going to move on to inside of this body. We're going to drill and tap that. Tap that. All right. So I'm going to leave the niche system on the lathe. And let's look at real quick what we're doing inside this body. So if I look at my pen here, my example, I have to create a hole and threads. One, threads for the section to thread into the body. And two, I need to clear the converter or a cartridge. Uh, if it's a fountain pen, if it's a roller ball, you're going to work off, off of that. But this is a converter. This converter is larger than most um, cartridges. So if I can clear this, I know I'm good. So I'm going to measure from the shoulder of my section where it meets the body. I don't want to measure at the end of those threads because I'm going to need those. I want to measure how much space I need. And I'm about 71.4 millimeters. So if we called it 72, 73, we're good. So this is 73 mil deep. I'm using an M10 uh, tap and die for this. It's a single start, not a triple start like our, our cap and body were. So I'm using an M10 or one. And so I'm going to use a 9 mil bit for the hole. So 9 millimeters is perfect for my threads here. And it gives me more than enough room for the converter. If I wasn't sure, I could always just measure my converter and see how much room I need for it. It's about seven, seven and a half, so maybe eight. So by using a nine millimeter bit, I've got more than enough room. I know my depth, 73 millimeter from the shoulder to the end is going to clear. And I should be in good shape when I'm done there. Actually, I'm going to leave this off because we'll test it here in just a sec. So if there's any questions on that, let me know. Uh, you can use other sizes for your section. You can use um, an M11 if you're wanting to live dangerously, because remember, the bigger it is, you're, the closer you're going to be to your threads. In an M14 or 15, it wouldn't be that big a deal. In a 12 and 13, it's going to be a little tight, but it can be done. You can also use a smaller one. You can use an M9. There's M9s by ones. There's M10s by 0.75, which are a finer thread, uh, which is what I use a lot. But you can do whatever you want. Most people tend to use M10 by one for their sections, from what I've seen. All right. So first thing we need to do is drill this. So I do need to take out the niche system. Let's go grab the drill get that ready. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off because we're actually going to, 
There it is. We're actually going to switch this to the tap holder anyway. Yeah, that's fine. And with the M10, you can use the large tap holder or you can use the middle size. It doesn't matter. So that's ready for us. We're going to take our, our 9 millimeter bit and our drill chuck and head over to the lathe. All right. And the beauty about drilling this hole is you've already got kind of a pilot hole with that 6 millimeter. So it's a lot easier and faster. It's not as... Uh, abrasive or aggressive inside. So it's pretty easy to do. Let's see, we'll do that. All right. Hopefully this is helping. Anybody getting excited to go give this a try that hasn't done it before? The main thing that you just want to do is practice. I swear every time you make one of these, it gets easier and easier. And you start to say, why was I, why did I wait to do that in the beginning? I let go of the drill. We all wait too long, I guess, to start things. Do you have any ideas of where people can get a 13.2 millimeter drill? Um, yeah, so they're 13.2, uh, they're out there, I don't know. But look up the equivalent of 13.2 millimeters to like the decimal of inches. And there's probably, I, actually we probably have it on the website, I'll look. There's probably a standard bit that's like right there, just barely above or barely below, and it would probably work. Um, actually, I know there is, I can't remember which one it is, but it's a standard bit that we carry, I know that. Um, I'll put some notes in this video later. So if you come back, look at the notes and we'll get a bunch of bit sizes and things for you. There's definitely a lot of crossover. So if you ever hear somebody say like a 13.2 or 13.3, whatever, don't get stuck on that. That may be working for this, um, but there's probably a bunch of other bits that'll work that are pretty close. Um, so just, you know, see what you can get and use that. But that's a good question because a lot of times I get hung up on stuff like, I'm like, oh, I need that exact tool or it won't work, and that's just not the case. Oh, we didn't talk about the depth here. Well, we did, we did on the paper, but uh, I have a mark on my bit, so in my brain I already knew where I was going, but I wanna make sure it's 73. So that was what we talked about for the depth. So I'm gonna look from the tip here. So 73, right at my line. Not sure if the camera will pick it up, but there is a little faint line on there. I tend to mark my bits a lot because usually I'll keep repeating it and it just makes it easier. You can measure every time and that's fine too. Whoa, oh boy, that was not good. <laughs> my tail stock, I slid it right into the edge. I was sliding my tailstock up and it was a little loose. There we go. Okay. Oh, good. If you guys make one, your first one or second one, whatever, send us a picture because we love seeing it. And it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, just send it along so we can check it out. It's fun to know that these videos are actually useful for people, so please uh, don't hesitate. Doggone it, I keep doing that. I'm like, oh, I have plenty of room. I'm not at the end of the hole. And then I am at the end of the hole. All right, we're almost deep enough here. And we are. Okay. So this one definitely, before I stick my, well, I'm gonna stick a converter in there. So it's not like I'm sticking the nib in but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of give this a little, oh yeah, you can see all that chill in the fall. <laughs> so I'm pretty good. I would love to have my <laughs> compressor out here, but I forgot to bring it out. <laughs> all right, we're gonna use this section. 
I don't normally like to use a finished one in case I have a booger in there, um, but this should work. Wait. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. All I did was drill it. I didn't tap it yet. I'm like, why isn't it threading? Duh. It's been a long day already, I guess. All right, let's tap this thing. I was just seeing if anyone was sleeping. I guess I'm sleeping. There's no threads in there. It won't tap. It won't thread in. All right. So, drilled out. That was the easy part. Let's grab the niche tool with the tap in it, which we already prepped. All right. Load this little guy in here. And these are kind of spring-loaded um, little jaws. This niche system is made in the USA. So it's kind of cool that it's a actually made in the USA tool. I have seen uh, similar ones come out over the last few years. And I can tell you from talking to people firsthand that bought them, they ended up buying these because they were not good. So beware if you're going to try to buy a, a replica or whatever you want to call it. But same thing, I'm going to get this tailstock up close. Walk this in here. I'm just at the start. I'm going to get my tap in, and I'm just going to kind of push and tap in. Now, I can probably go a little further in this one because generally my uh, sections are a little longer than my cap threads. Let's look at this. So you can see the little curlies coming off of here. That means we're, we're probably in real good shape as far as size and location. Back it up. Forward, 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 back it up. Forward, forward, forward. Oh, and look at that blank. This is going to look cool. Forward, 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 back it up. And just to be sure. Oh, yeah, we're, we're way in there, so we're good. All right. Yes, Amy? Can you get extra holders for the niche system? Yes. So the larger... Um, Huh? Uh, the question was, can you get extra? There's all my curlies, so pretty good. Uh, the question is, can you get extra holders for the niche system? You can get extra tap and die holders in the sizes. We have most of them. Um, that is a good question. And I can tell you back before I was ever a dealer for these, when the original guy named Neil was making these in his little home shop here in Phoenix, I bought a bunch of extras because I had every tap and every die in a holder because I don't know why I hate changing tools. So that way I could just throw the new holder in and it had the tap and die. I could write on it what it was and it was much easier. So uh, you can do that. You certainly don't need to. If you're looking to not spend a lot of money, that's a great way to not spend more, but uh, you can get extra holders and they are handy. Now we have it tapped. Mm, WD-40. All right, so let's see if let's see if I have the right depth. If I don't have the right depth, it'll stop. And how my threads look? Oh, they're pretty smooth. Oh boy, that's pretty great, right? What are you laughing at? Hmm. All right, here's my cap. Some goobers in there, but that's all right. Uh-oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a little snug. So I'm going to adjust that by just sanding my threads down a little bit. You can hear the creak a little tight. All right, there we go. Oh, plus there's a bunch of crap in there now. It's on my nib and stuff. So I probably should clean this out really good. Uh, one thing, if you have a ultrasonic cleaner, which a lot of us do for other pen making, it is great because if you're using WD-40 or oil or anything like this, I always have it sitting on the table next to the lathe when I'm doing this stuff. And I'll throw my parts in there a lot and clean them. And one, it helps get the little bits of debris out that even your air gun will leave. Plus, it'll get all that WD-40 and stuff off in the long run. So this looks pretty good. What do you guys think about this so far? Pretty easy, right? I mean, really, we're just drilling holes and running a tap or running a die. Um, the hardest part, 
to me is the tenons and things. So uh, having a tool like a tenon cutter will help that, but it's not necessary. You can obviously cut a tenon. Next week when we make the section, you're gonna see that we're gonna do more steps to make this little section than we did on the, tap, on the cap and body together. So the section is probably the most intimidating part and it's probably the most frustrating because of the very thin walls and thin parts. Uh, you can break it really easy. So that's gonna be a good one. Any questions that I didn't answer? Um, not so far, but okay. there's a delay. Oh yeah, there's a delay. So this is where we're gonna call it for today, the, the cap and body. Next week we make the section and we do the shaping and finishing. We're gonna basically wrap it up. And then, like I said, the following week we will do um, a cap with a clip and then the following week we'll do a roller ball. So it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys are liking this. Please let us know if you're liking it or not so we should keep going or not. Um, if you wanna know about any of these tools that we talked about, watch the first video. It, we went over all the tools in depth. And also on the homepage of Turner's Warehouse, we have everything listed that we offer. So if we don't have it there, we may not have it, but we try to have everything in stock. That being said, if you're trying to buy any of these kitless tools or bespoke tools and we're out of stock right now, we are getting everything back. It's constantly coming and going. So uh, if we are out of something, just know it's on the way. You can put your name in the wait list and we'll get it uh, to you ASAP. So please like and subscribe so we know if you are into this or not. Amy, did I miss anything? Just thank everyone for the technical difficulties. Yeah, thanks. Amy said thanks for hanging in at the beginning with the microphone. I hope it was worth the few minutes we spent on that because it sounded much better. And now we know for next time what the problem was. So I'll make sure next time we just get going right away and we will have a lot of thing, a lot of uh, fun stuff to make with the section. If you guys aren't aware, check out the ornament contest. We just announced it the last couple days. Uh, if you made one last year and you're ready to do it again, let's do it. Let's raise a bunch of money for St. Jude. It was really cool. Uh, and there were some crazy cool ornaments that came in. So get busy on that. Any other questions? Comments? All right. Uh, recommendation for an ultrasonic cleaner. I could not tell you the brand of my, well, I could tell you the brand of mine. I have two. I have a little kind of oval one and it wasn't very expensive, but I bought it like 10 years ago. So I couldn't tell you how much it is. And then recently at an auction, I got a Vivor, V-E-V-O-R, and it's a seven gallon and seems good. I don't know a lot of, it's newer to me, so I don't know, but the other one has run and run and run. Uh, and it's kind of a funky little, I'll take a picture of it or something. I'll show it in the next stream. How about that? We'll have it here and actually we'll clean the parts because we'll want to clean them as we go to shape and stuff. So that'll be good to have it here and we'll show you that process. So uh, good question, but I don't know the brand because it's one of those tools that I use all the time. I couldn't tell you what, the, what it says on it. <laughs> kind of funny. I'm not a tech tool guy. I don't care about specs or anything. I just want to make sure it works when I want it. So. All right, good stuff. This is fun. We're gonna complete this pen next week, pretty much. Yes. What solution goes in the ultrasonic cleaner? Is it a solution or is it water? The question is what solution goes in the ultrasonic cleaner? Uh, you can do two things. Um, you can just use water. So the ultrasonic vibrates at a crazy rate, which just literally shakes the little dust and particles off your stuff. You can just use water. It does have heat capabilities or I like to put simple green in mine, and I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I do it a lot and it works great. So simple green, not straight. I usually mix like half simple green, half water, and it works really well. And I use it for a lot of stuff, not just these parts, but other stuff in making things. Like when we etch Damascus, we will throw it in the ultrasonic for just a minute to like get all the goop out of the, the stuff, the layers. All right. Thanks everybody, thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you next week. Be sure and subscribe so you can watch next week's and not forget about it. Uh, thanks to everybody for coming. I can't believe we had a celebrity in here, Zach Higgins, that was amazing. Uh, I like to give Zach crap because he's a friend. <laughs> so uh, let us know if, you, if we miss anything in the comments or if you liked it, let us know in the comments so we know because usually only one person ever says, hey, that was, that was useful and we're like, okay, cool. All right.
Over and out. 30 second delay. Ending stream. Yeah, diluted simple green. There you go. Sorry, Zach. I didn't mean to.